Decisions Control Your Destiny, episode 151. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Profit with Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and today I am going to go in a little bit of a talk about something that uh, was triggered from uh, a, a audio um, thing that I was listening to. I'm going to get into that in just a moment. But before I do, uh, I just want to share with you, if you're listening to this on the day it comes out, and this is only for people who are listening to this on the day it's released. So anybody who's listening to this after Tuesday, November 17th, you can ignore the ne- next 30 seconds or so. Uh, Maddie Martin from Smith AI, Mark Homer from GNGF, and myself are going to be doing a, um, a call uh, it's going to be a Zoom call. It's not a webinar. It's everyone is going to have uh, you know face on camera ability. Uh, we're calling it COVID COVID over cocktails, November seventeenth, nine p.m. Eastern, um, and we're, we we earmark two hours for it. We definitely don't need to stay for two hours if people don't want us to. Um, but we're going to be covering you know where you at, um, touching base, and what are your plans for twenty twenty one and. Um, how has life been? Uh, just a kind of casual conversation, check-in, networking opportunity. So if you're available and you can join us, we'd love to have you. Profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID over cocktails. Profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID over cocktails. Join us there. Now, this episode is inspired by something I was listening to. So I recently started to listen to an audio program by Tony Robbins. And um, I'm always looking for inspiration. I'm always, you know, I listen to podcasts. I listen to different things. I, I read read books. I listen to books. Um, and I got my hands on some Tony Robbins stuff. And I was listening to a, a bit that he was talking about decisions control your destiny. And it resonated very much with something that I've been trying to articulate. And I'm going to try to... Um, first of all, re- kind of relay his sentiment in this episode, but more importantly, throw in um, my own feelings and uh, how this affects you and why it's so important to really think about this and start to appreciate the true concept behind it. Um, so here's the deal. A lot of people blame their surroundings and their circumstances for where they are. So, for example, if you are not as successful as you'd like, or it, or even, um, you know, you are successful, but you are not happy with where you're at, or, um, even, you know, we, we can look at other things in life, um, you know, like, I, I was married, I got divorced. That whole, that whole process, right? What, did, I, did I marry the right person? Did I, was divorce the right decision? Um, but this is not a question about right or wrong. The point is that all of those things that occurred in my life were a result of a decision, And you cannot dispute the fact that where you are today is a result of decision, a decision or a series of decisions that you've made in the past. For example, everyone listening to this podcast pretty much is an attorney, which means that you went to law school, which means that at some point you had to make a decision about where to go to college. And then from there, you had to make a decision about which law school to go to. And I am sure that when you were in the process of making the decision of where to go to college, 
that f- felt like a insurmountable mountain to overcome. It was scary. Um, it was it was something that you really grappled with. But at the end of the day, you made a decision. And as a result of that decision, you are who you are today. Had you gone to a different school, you would have made different friends. You might have been in different classes. You might have had a professor who talked to you a different way. You may not have even become an attorney if that wasn't where you were headed. You have to look back and see you know, what parts of your life are controlled by the fact that you went to that particular school. But this is one example where a simple decision that you made, and I say simple, not, you know, obviously you grappled with it at the time, but when you think about it, you look back in the past, it's really seemingly an inconsequential decision, yet it has such a profound effect on the trajectory of the rest of your life. So the first point that I want to bring across is that decisions that we make, they have an impact on the future. And therefore, if we're struggling currently, it is most likely a result of previous decisions that we made that are causing it. And therefore, if we try to blame it on circumstance, what we're doing is is we're basically copping out of responsibility for the decisions that we made. And, you know, for example, we just went through or we're going through this COVID pandemic. But in March, when it first started, the lockdowns first started and business dried up and everybody went to zero. And then ultimately things started to come back to life and and the economy started to get, you know, began to get restarted. Um, Courts started to reopen. Business started to pick up again. When things came to a screeching halt and you... Uh, and I'm going to say you, I'm not accusing you because some of you definitely were prepared, but, and you weren't prepared. And what I mean is not that you had a bunch of work backlogged so that you can continue working even when there's no business coming through the door. Not what I mean, although that could be one way of dealing with this, but you weren't prepared financially for a downturn in business or a complete stoppage in business for a period of time. And then you were left scrambling to try to figure out how to keep your employees on, how to make payroll, how to uh, pay your bills, how to survive at home. And suddenly you required this handout from the government, this PPP and the EIDL. And instead of focusing on your family, on your personal situation, on bringing in new clients or serving your existing clients instead of focusing on all those things instead you were focusing on how the heck do i navigate this ppp and how do i get access to this money and how do i make sure it's forgiven and how do i get the most the dollars out of this program and i'm not pointing fingers at anybody and i don't think that you should not have taken advantage of those programs but there was so much time and energy spent when that first came out by people trying to figure out how to navigate it and figure out how to take advantage of it. If you had had money in the bank waiting for this kind of setback, if you had an emergency fund in your business and you had been prepared, you would not have been scrambling. You would have been relaxed. You would have known everything is going to work itself out. The decision to not plan for the future in this way or the indecision of being um, conservative and saving money and socking money away for something like this, that decision is what directly caused you to be in panic mode when COVID hit. Instead, most people were saying, Who could have expected a pandemic? I would have never thought that this would happen. It's COVID's fault. My lack of business is COVID's fault. The fact that I need to lay lay off my employees and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them back and all the years of hard work and training them is COVID's fault. 
these are the building blocks, the assets of your business. And it's your it's it's in your control to make sure that you are properly prepared for it. So you can start to see how decisions or or lack of decisions in the past can be the direct result that you're experiencing today. And you can also see that no matter what the situation is, there's always the ability to point to the external, the exterior forces, the forces that are outside of our control and place the blame there. However, if you do that, you are going to be removing responsibility from yourself and you're going to be missing the opportunity to see where you might have made the wrong decision and what you can do to rectify it so that you are not the victim again. So when we play the victim mentality, when we, um, when we place the blame on something else, we are essentially making ourselves a victim. And when we play the victim, we are removing our power and our ability to grow from that situation. And we're better than that. We are entrepreneurs. We are business owners. We are willing to accept risk to a level that nobody else can handle. But at the same time, we have to accept responsibility for everything that we do. And we have to be willing to swallow our lumps and recognize when we've taken a misstep and get back on the path and learn from it and do better the next time. And hopefully our business survives to be able to, for there to be a next time. But even if it doesn't, we can always start another one, right? So um, one of the most important lessons here is to recognize that decisions control uh, the outcomes that you're experiencing today and you should not be placing blame on things around you. Now, there's another thing that I want to bring to light here, and that is, and this I talk about a lot. I don't know if, I, if I've talked about it recently on the podcast, but I definitely talk about this a lot, especially in my coaching, is that the one, if I had to pick one thing that prevents business owners and your law firm owners will talk specifically to you. One thing that pre- prevents law firm owners from achieving the success that they want to achieve, from achieving their goals, the one thing that's stopping you from getting there is indecision, is lack of making decisions. And the reason why I, am, I firmly believe that this is the one key is because there are so many things that you already know that you can do to get to where you want to go. And the reason that I know that you know this is because I offer a 90-minute free coaching session. I'm not advertising it right now because we are so busy with preparing for the Law Firm Growth Summit. I cannot afford to be giving free 90-minute coaching sessions right now. But when I am promoting or or, or um, filling a new uh, group of 90-day law firm turnaround group coaching students, uh, group coaching clients, when I'm doing that, I do a 90-day free coaching session. And in that session, I ask you some basic questions. And one of the things that we explore together is what is holding you back, standing in the way, or stopping you from achieving the results that you want? And if I ask you that question enough times, you will have the answer. I am not providing the answer in that coaching conversation, but I can tell you that 100% of the time when I have that call, Every single time, the person on the other side of that conversation is able to answer that question. And from the fact that you are able to answer that question, that tells me 
that you know what the solution is to get the results that you want. So why are you not doing that? The reason you're not doing that is because we get in our own head and we start to say, what if, what if this thing I know I need to do doesn't work out? What if it makes me look foolish? What if it, I, I am not professional enough? What if it diminishes my stature? There's a lot of the what ifs that are tied to ego, a lot of the what ifs that are tied to just fear of the unknown. But if we start to look at why are we not doing the things that we know we need to do to move forward, it's almost always because we're worried about what the result might be. One of the variables of the outcome is an undesired outcome, and therefore, we don't even take the action. We don't even take the next step to do that thing because we're afraid of one possible outcome. And instead, you get the absolute guaranteed outcome, which is lack of results. Because you didn't try, because you sat there in indecision, you did not make a decision to implement something. You did not make a decision to try something new. That guaranteed you're staying right where you are and not moving forward. And uh, my, my mentor, James Wedmore, he likes to use this line, action creates clarity. But I believe that action creates clarity is the step after decision making, right? We don't take action until we made a decision that we're going to take action. And action does create clarity because when you take action, you find out, did this action work or didn't it work? And if it didn't work, then I know not to do that again, and I know need to try something else. And if it did work, great. I'm now one step closer to where I need to be. So that's a beautiful thing. And if, as soon as you start to embrace that, you can really start to, to progress towards whatever you're trying to achieve. But the key is, is that before that, the step before that is the decision-making process. It's knowing that I believe that in order to achieve my results, I have to do X and overcoming my fear and anxiety and fear of the unknown and worrying about what ifs and making the decision that I am going to do that and now following up on that decision and taking the action, that is what creates successful owners of law firms. And if you if we look at anybody there, you know, there are people who I've interviewed here on the podcast and there are people who I've had conversations with that I haven't interviewed here on the podcast that that they were really successful with their law firm pretty much out of the gate. They started their firm and it looks like they were an overnight success. The reality is, is that they had to go through the same things that you're going through, except that they are action takers, which means that they didn't sit there and worry about what's going to happen. They just kept taking action after action after action. So all the failures that you have experienced over 10 years, and I'm saying you, if you're listening to this, I'm not assuming that you've been in business for 10 years. I'm not assuming that you're not successful, okay? But you'll under, you understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm, I'm just talking to somebody here. Um, the same lessons that you learned slowly over 10 years because every time that you learned a lesson, it set you back and it made you afraid to try the next thing and you sat on it for another three to six months before trying the next thing. They just kept trying one thing after another after another. So what they did was is they compacted that 10-year experience into 12 months, 18 months. So by the time that they were a year and a half in, in, into their practice, they had already figured everything out. Because they just kept trying something new, something new, something new every single time. And that is, I don't know if I could say this any more clearly, that is the key to your success. If you want to know what is the key to your success, it is think about what are the steps that you need to take to achieve the result that you want. Intellectually, you know what it is. The only thing standing in your way is you. The only thing standing in your way is you. Map out the action plan and start to take action. And don't get derailed by the fact that something doesn't work. That's part of the process. 
Failure is part of the process. It's not failure until you define it as, as failure. So when you set out, you take an action, and it does not get the intended results. It does not get the desired results that you were expecting from that action. It is only a failure if you call it a failure. Otherwise, it's a lesson. And when you learn from a lesson, that's a win. That's not a failure. That's a success. So you took action. It didn't get the desired result. Success. I learned from that. I'm going to try the next thing. And when you start to approach your business this way, when you start to approach everything that you do this way, that is going to absolutely skyrocket and accelerate your growth. I guarantee you, if you operate from this modus operandi, that you will be in a totally different situation 12 to 18 months from now. And guess what? Decisions control your destiny. The ability for you to make these decisions are going to control the outcome that you achieve. And making the right decisions are going to get you to the right place. And making the wrong decisions are going to get you to the wrong place. But if you are, if you pay attention, you can identify that the decision was the wrong decision. And you can get back to where you need to be. You get back on, on track, back on the path. Before making these decisions... It requires you to really think about it. Think about what you want. If you don't know what you want, if you don't know what direction you're going to, how are you going to make the right decisions to get there? And th- this can, this topic of, of understanding, know what you, what you want, that is a whole separate topic. But you know what? I think, did we even just re- re- do a, re- a replay, a best of last week? on the what do you want episode i think we might have i'm actually i'm pulling up my podcast player right now and i am looking to see what is the episode we released last tuesday yes episode 149 best of what do you want go listen to that episode and then re-listen to this one because that is you know The key to success is taking action, which is based off of making decisions, right? But if you don't know where you want to go, if you don't know what you want to get out of your law firm, if you don't know why you're doing it, you're never going to be making the right decisions. You you have no North Star. You don't have anything to aim for. You don't, it's, it's like getting in the car and driving around in circles around the neighborhood and hoping to get to, you know, from New York to, to Miami. You're never going to get there. You can drive around in circles for, for well, the entire, you know, if it, if it takes, um, you know, 18 hours to drive from New York to Miami, you can drive in circles for 18 hours. The fact that you drove for 18 hours and you consumed all that fuel and put all that mileage on your car doesn't mean that you got to Florida. All it means is that you drove for 18 hours and you consumed all that gas. And that's what happens when you're running your law firm and you don't have a plan, you don't know where you're going, you don't know what, what where you want to head to. You're just you could be doing laps around the office. You could be you could be doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. And the reality is is nothing's going to change because you don't have direction. You don't know where you're going. So that's a whole, that's a whole nother topic, a whole nother podcast episode. Go listen to it. Um, but once you know what you want, you know what your goals are, and you can start to think about how am I going to get there, and you create that action plan, then you make decisions on what am I going to do first, and how am I going to accomplish this, and then I, I set out to do it, and then I figure out how to measure it so that I can see if I'm getting results. And I keep taking action, doing things, doing things, doing things. And that is what's going to get me to where I want to go. So hopefully this made sense to you. Um, Decisions control your destiny. Folks, we have amazing guest interviews coming up. And hopefully by Thursday, we'll announce the opening of uh, the sale of our 
Law Firm Growth Summit tickets. They're going to be opening for sale very soon. If it's not Thursday, it'll be next Tuesday. Um, but sometime, sometime in the next few episodes, we're going to announce that. And you, as my podcast listeners, are going to get first dibs at early bird access that nobody's going to be offered in the public. So stay tuned. You want to catch that while you can before uh, we open it up to the public. It's going to be opening to the public right after Thanksgiving. So you'll have a, a brief window to jump on the opportunity and snag your seats for the Law Firm Growth Summit. It's going to be held February 9th through the 11th, 2021. Super, super excited to share more details with you as the event approaches. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If this is your first time listening, Hit the subscribe button if you want to get more like it. Uh, We're here every Tuesday and Thursday. Thursdays are our guest interview days. And coming up next Thursday, episode 152, we're going to have Chris Walker. Really excited for that interview. So stay tuned and I will see you, talk to you soon. Have you been enjoying the show? We sure hope so. To make sure you never miss an episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app. Next week, we will be back with more valuable resources and ideas on how to break the mold and take your law firm to the next level.